This episode of BFC TV is brought to you by Polaroid. We all absolutely love shooting Polaroids and forming one of a kind physical objects that you can hand to the person to your right and ogle at. But sometimes you have to hand it to someone 2,000 miles to your right to share your work. And in that case, you're gonna have to scan that Polaroid. It can be a bottleneck for many. But in this episode of BFC TV, we're gonna walk through an easy solution to speeding up your Polaroid scanning needs. Let's do it. Welcome to BFC TV, my name is Ben, and on this program we're going to walk through scanning essentials to get the best digital interpretation of your Polaroid pictures. There are many ways to skin a potato and many ways to scan a photo, but Polaroids kindly offer a very special challenge in that the surface of these instant prints are highly reflective. That poses two challenges with scanning in general. One, with mobile scanning, you can't just easily take a picture of your picture because garish reflections will appear that make it look like the moon was crashing into your reality or other such obstructions. You can use the Polaroid mobile app to get around this, allowing you to take photos at an angle, which it then distorts to give you a flat image. This method is nice for quick snaps, but it has definite limitations. Color reproduction can be iffy, and ultimately the resolution of your picture won't be sufficient for a high quality archival scan, which is what we're all about. We love archival scans. And this is where flatbed scanners enter the fray. This here is an Epson V370. It may not look like much, but it's capable of scanning images at massive resolutions of up to 12,800 DPI, which would give you an unnecessarily gargantuan file, but it just shows what it's capable of. This scanner is also very inexpensive, ranging from 20 bucks to $100 used. CNET.com recently reported there are as many as two bajillion scanners in the world today. So there are countless options to pick something up for scanning Polaroids without breaking the bank and toppling the financial system. Remember when I mentioned Polaroids are highly reflective? Well, that challenge re-enters the conversation when it comes to flatbed scanning too. When a reflective surface like a Polaroid presses against glass like that on a scanner, it produces something called Newton rings, which are ugly, unpredictable ponds of interference that you'll see on your scans if you just place your pictures directly face down on the glass. MGM Pictures presents Attack of the Newton Rings. To avoid this, BFC offers a truly magnificent tool called the Instant Scan Adapter V2. It's the V2 because once upon a time this product was offered by the Impossible Project, but it's been off the market for years, and this tool is so dang good, we simply had to make one at BFC. We did this in collaboration with Camera Dactyl, a legendary camera craftsman that built a clean, high quality adapter made of black plexiglass. This adapter alleviates numerous headaches when it comes to Polaroid scanning. For one, if you just place a bunch of Polaroids on a scanner glass, you not only have to deal with Newton rings, but the pain in the bun of rotating each one at a perfect angle, cropping them, and eliminating artifacts from the scanner glass. With the Instant Scan Adapter V2, you can scan four Polaroids at a time that align perfectly straight with a high contrast black mat for easy cropping and export. It lifts the Polaroids ever so slightly off the surface of the glass, eliminating the potential for Newton rings. Let me show you how this thing works. First, it comes with this brown protective layer. Some people accidentally leave that on, so just a heads up. Let's peel it off and reveal the satisfying black plexi beneath. Now grab some double-sided tape from your local mom and pop tape shop and apply it to the cutouts. This will adhere the Polaroids and hold them flat so that they are raised just above the scanner glass, eliminating Newton rings. Your actual taping method is a matter of preference. You could go box style, crisscross applesauce, the freak, or however ornery you want to get to make sure the Polaroid is as flat as possible inside the adapter cutout. Now just place the adapter directly on the flatbed. I, I mean inside it. <laughs> okay, okay, there you go. In your scanning software of choice, you can now select each Polaroid separately and have it produce individual files or save some time and scan the entire area at once. I find this makes the whole process run a bit faster since flatbeds can sure be sluggish. And with this clean black background, it's super easy to select it out in Photoshop or just send the file to your phone and crop by hand. The DPI, which means dots per inch, will determine the resolution of the file the scanner produces. I typically select 600 DPI for general use, 
It's good enough for online stuff. And I go 1200 if I'm enlarging or I need a particularly chunky archival file for a special shot. If you are scanning Instax wide pictures, you're in luck. Instax wide is basically the same dimensions as a Polaroid, so it fits in there too. If you're scanning Instax mini, we got that adapter. Type 100 pack film, don't even sweat it. We got that too. Come on, man. Don't you know at this point we just like have you? Now let's talk about some post-production tips to help you get the most out of your scans. I just gotta say it, life is easier with Photoshop. With this classic Adobe program, you can import your scan and use the magic wand tool at a tolerance of 100 to completely knock out the black background. Now you can select each Polaroid and make a new layer for each shot. Before I export those files and brush my hands together like this to denote a job well done. I usually zoom in a little bit and really examine the images, make sure there's no dust or stray extracurriculars that may have marred my photo. Using the clone stamp tool, you can hold Alt or Option to select a small area that's identical to the spot you need to heal and then just click on the dust spot and abracadabra, you've disappeared that baddie off the dust hell. Another thing you can do at this point is correct the contrast and saturation of the Polaroid. Keep in mind that you are scanning a physical photo with unique properties that may not always translate directly to a scan. If you hold a Polaroid under strong light, you might notice more shadow details, maybe more saturation, and using the curve tools in Photoshop, you can lift up the shadows and highlights to make sure it's more true to what you're seeing to the naked eye. Put some, put some clothes on that eye. How, how untoward. Now that you've made all adjustments you see fit, just select your layers and export them. You could also send the scans to your phone and crop using your fingies, but the precision and speed of Photoshop is hard to top for me. Also, after you're done and wanna scan the next batch, it has these finger holes. They're really fun to use, and I don't recommend spinning it, but sometimes I honestly just spin it. That should about do it for scanning Polaroids with the Instant Scan Adapter V2. If you've got any additional questions, hit us up in the comments. Find us on Instagram, at Brooklyn Film Camera, and of course, head over to our website, where you can grab an adapter of your own. Thanks for watching, happy scanning, and sayonara.